we're going to have a think about the principle of moments today. The formula which you need to know here is as follows. The moment of a force is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance from the pivot. So moment is force times distance. Uh, because we're measuring forces in newtons and distances in metres, we measure moments in newton metres. So what does all this mean? Well, the first thing to realise is that the word moment is enormously misleading. It has nothing to do with time. When we talk about moments in physics, we're talking about the turning effect of a force. So the moment is the turning effect of a force. Forces, when they're applied to objects which have pivots, tend to make them rotate. Let's take a simple example. Suppose I've got a door with a pivot a hinge at one side. And now imagine this is a top-down view. And suppose I come along and put a force there, then that's going to make the door spin round in that direction. I apply that force at a certain distance from the pivot. And you can probably guess or try it for yourself and you'll find that when you put your force on the door, if you push a door at the outside edge there, a long way away from the pivot, it has a much bigger turning effect. It's much easier to open the door by pushing on this side. If you try and push a door really close to the hinge, it's really hard to make it turn. So you need a much bigger force if you're close to the pivot or the hinge than if you're on the outside. And that's a, an example of the principle of moments. The turning effect is bigger if the distance away from the pivot is bigger. So in this case, to calculate the moment, we just multiply the force times that particular distance, the perpendicular distance between the pivot and the place that we're applying the force. Okay, now why do we care about moments? Well, we care about moments because we want to see whether or not things are balanced, whether or not they're in equilibrium. Now, for something to be in equilibrium, you might think it's enough for the forces to be balanced, for the upwards forces to be equal to the downwards forces. And that has to be true. But also, as well as the forces being balanced, the moments have to balance. That is to say, the forces which are trying to spin something one way have to be balanced by the forces which are trying to spin it the other way. So probably the simplest example would be to imagine a seesaw. Let's imagine you've got a beam here with a pivot in the middle then you can probably guess that if you put a weight on this side, let's say we've got uh, 10 newtons of weight there, and let's suppose it's at a distance of two meters from the pivot. Uh, well, obviously that weight is gonna make the, uh, make the bar rotate in that direction. It's gonna rotate anti-clockwise. So what we say is that the anti-clockwise moment The force times the distance that's trying to spin it anti-clockwise is going to be 10 times 2, it's going to be 20 newton metres. Um, Alright, suppose I want my bar to balance, I want it to be in equilibrium. I'm going to have to put a weight on the other side. Let's suppose I, I'm going to use a, I don't know, a 20 newton weight. So I've got a bigger weight here. Then you can probably guess that to make it balance, I'm only going to have to put that one metre away from the pivot. Okay. And we can see that because if I now multiply the forces and the distances on this side, the clockwise moment, the moment due to that force, is going to be equal to 20 newtons multiplied by one metre, which is going to be 20 newton metres. And lo and behold, I've got balanced moments, I've got equilibrium. So to get a beam to balance, we need to have not just balanced forces, we also need to have balanced moments. So we can use this principle when trying to work out unknown forces or 
unknown distances. Let's suppose now that I've got a beam, again with a pivot in the middle, and on this side I've got 30 newtons at a distance of, let's say, 2 metres. Uh, on this side I've got an unknown force, which we're going to call F, and this is, let's say, it's not quite the scale, but let's say F is 4 metres away. All right, so a kind of question you might be asked on this is to work out the size of the force that would balance that 30. So what we do is we apply the principle of moments. Here we've got an anti-clockwise moment. The anti-clockwise moment is going to be force times distance, 30 newtons times 2 metres, 60 newton metres. What about the clockwise moment? Well, we don't exactly know. It's a force times by a distance. We don't yet know the force. But one thing we do know is that if the beam is in equilibrium, those two have to be equal to each other. So I can say that F times 4 is equal to 60, which means if I rearrange that equation, F equals 60 divided by 4, same as 30 divided by 2, which is 50 newtons. So that's an example of how we can use the principle of moments to work out unknown forces.